Good morning. Confess with me now. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over our government. Jesus is Lord over this nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the world. We have been looking at that the Word of God is the most valuable possession that you and I own. And in the last uh, three or four, we're looking at what, <clears throat> excuse me, the value that God himself places on the Word of God. Yesterday, we talked about how Jesus said to Martha, one thing is needful, and that thing is the Word of God Mary has chosen that good part which shall never be taken away from her. And Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus hearing the word. So hearing the word is the most important thing. It is the one thing that is needful in our life. In John 8, 31, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the only place for the truth to find truth is the word of God. And if we continue in the word, then we will know the truth, and that truth will make us free. And then in verse 37, Jesus said, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. So he was telling them, my word has no place in you. We need to let the word of God have place in us. In Mark 7:13. Jesus said this, that you make the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have delivered and many such things you do. You know, religion has many traditions that are totally opposite of the word of God because the word of God was sent to set us free, to set the captives free, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. But Jesus said here in Mark 7, 13, you make the word of God of no effect in your life because you hold to your traditions. So one of the traditions, up please, she said. So one of the traditions that Christians have that uh, has come through the pulpits is that you may ask God for something and he may say no and he may say yes and he may say maybe. But that's not what God said. God himself, Jesus said, and Jesus is God. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7, Ask and it shall be given unto, me, unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives. And he that seeks finds, and to him that knocks, it shall be opened. And then he said that if you being natural or evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good, give good things to them that do what? Ask him. And then, of course, in Mark eleven twenty four, he said, What things soever you desire. When you pray, believe, you receive them, and you shall have them. So he, never, he didn't say, I may say yes, I may say no, I may say maybe. He never said that. He said, ask, and it, what you ask for, will be given unto you. So we have to let go of religious traditions and find out what the Word of God says, because the Word is only there to benefit you, to bless you, to set you free. In um, Mark 16, verse 
20, verse 20, he says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following them. So the only thing that God will confirm or perform in your life is the word of God. It says the Lord was working with them, confirming the word. He wasn't confirming their sermons. He wasn't confirming just anything they said. It says he was confirming the word. So in your life, the only thing that God will perform is the word of God. So make sure that you are believing, that you are hearing and believing and confessing the word and not what religion has taught us that has robbed so many people of unbelief, which has robbed them of the promises that God has given to them. And then another verse in Acts 12, 24 says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. Of course, this was after Jesus went uh, to be by on the right hand of the Father after he ascended, ascended into heaven. And then he sent the Holy Spirit which came upon the 120 that were in the upper room. So after that, it says, but the word of God. He didn't say, but the ministries grew. It didn't say, but um, the people grew. It says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. And then in Acts 19 verse 20, it says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So the word of God was the preeminent thing. Because remember, he said, I will send the Holy Spirit and he will guide you into all truth. Which we just found out that the word of God is the only truth there is. The power of God in the word of God and God confirming his word. Remember all day. And confess with me now, Jesus is Lord. Thank God his word works. Can you smile? <laughs> okay. <laughs>